Lasers are awesome. It's just a fact of life. So I'm going to show you two ways to add lasers to your shots in DaVinci Resolve. The first way is super easy, anyone can follow along. The second way is a bit more advanced, but it's definitely worth it for the result you get. So I found this shot of a girl firing an actual gun on Pexels.com, and I thought it would work well since you got the actual recoil. Now obviously it won't always be possible to shoot a real gun, so if that's the case then you can use something like a Nerf gun or a finger gun. If you do shoot your own footage, I would recommend flashing a light on them. That way when you add the laser, it'll look like it's casting light on the person. I wasn't able to do that for this shot, so I'm gonna show you a workaround you can do in post. All right, so I have my clip here in Fusion. I'm just going to right click on it and click New Fusion Clip. So now I can go into Fusion. All right, I'm gonna click this to make it one viewer just to make things easier. All right, so first I'm gonna scrub through my footage and find when it looks like she fires, thinking that's frame 24. That's where the sparks start showing up. So first I'm gonna bring down a background node from right here. I'm gonna pull up from this square and drag it over this square here. So that'll make a merge node. So if I bring that to the viewer by pressing two, it's all black. So I'm gonna select my background, change the color to white. Now I'm gonna add a polygon node by clicking right here. So now I'm gonna add some points and mask out the shape of my laser. Really simple shape. So now I'm gonna round out the edge of this by selecting these and hitting Shift S and then I'll do that on the other side. All right, so now I want this to move. So I'm gonna select these, move, let's see, maybe three frames later and then drag it off screen. So now it's animated shooting out. But if we go a few frames back, our laser's just hanging out there. So what I'm gonna do is put a keyframe on the level right here, then I'm gonna go back one frame and bring it down all the way. So now we have no laser and our laser's shooting out just at the right time. So you can see as it moves, it looks kind of cartoony. So one way we can fix that is we can go to the settings and click motion blur. So I'm just gonna crank up the quality all the way. So now it has realistic motion blur. It looks quite nice. So now let's add a glow to it. So I'm gonna hold down shift and space and that'll bring up the tool menu. So I'm gonna search soft glow. Now that'll add a glow to the thing. So I'm just going to make it red. Then I'm gonna bring down the green and blue. Now the trick to getting a realistic glow is having multiple versions of it getting bigger and bigger. So I'm just gonna bring down the glow size on this one. Uh, pretty thin like that. Now I'm going to add another soft glow and this one I'm going to bring up the glow size and maybe bring down the gain a little bit and then finally I'm going to add one more soft glow and this one's going to be huge it's going to be like a hundred. Now we have a very realistic glow. Now I'm going to add a color corrector node just so I can play with the colors a little bit. I think I'm going to bring the saturation up a little bit so I'm going to bring up the gamma to make it even brighter and then make the red a little bit stronger. Now that's looking very cool. Next, let's add a muzzle flash. So the one I'm using came from productioncrate.com where you can download tons of free muzzle flash assets. Now the one I'm using isn't actually muzzle flash. It's supposed to be a spell from Harry Potter, but I like the way it looks, so it's gonna be our little secret. So I'm gonna open the media pool and bring down the muzzle flash asset. Now I can close the media pool. So then I'm going to merge this over our footage, bring that to the viewer and change the type to screen. Now we don't see anything. If we go to the first frame, we can see our asset. So it's starting at the wrong time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select our media in two. I'm gonna grab this gray line right here and then drag it so that the first number starts at 24. So now it's starting at the right frame. So let's move it into place. So I'm gonna add a transform node. So I'm gonna take this pivot X and drag it over until this green X is in the middle of our flash. So now if I bring down the size, it'll scale from that area. So I'm gonna make it the right size and drag it over to my gun. That looks nice, but obviously it's the wrong color. So I'm gonna add another color corrector and then just bring up the hue until it's the right color. Now that's looking really dope. I especially like the sparks and the smoke that the spell asset gives. Just gives it kind of a cool sci-fi look. Now you might notice that we have this huge bright thing in front of her, but it's not actually casting any light on her. So what I'm gonna do to fix that. So I'm gonna take the media in, I'm gonna copy it and then paste it up here. Just control C, control V. So now I'm gonna merge this over and change the apply mode to screen. Well, that made it a little bit brighter, but it's the wrong color. So I'm going to add a color corrector and bring it to red. Then I'm also gonna bring up the gain just a little bit. So now the whole image is brighter, but we don't want that. So with my merge selected, I'm gonna add another polygon. Then I'm just gonna mask out the part I want to be lit up. All right, so if you look at that, that looks terrible. What we can do to make it look better is just bring up the soft edge a bunch. That looks pretty good. But if we move a couple frames back, we can see that it's lighting up before the laser comes out. So what we can do is in the merge, put a keyframe on the blend, go back one frame, bring it down to zero. Then I'm gonna go a few frames forward as the laser gets out of sight and bring down the blend again. So now it's nothing, lights up, and then fades back down. 
Then you can add a bunch of different masks for the different parts of the body. I'm just doing the head for the sake of the tutorial. This method works well if you're adding a few lasers, but what if you need tons of lasers? Or what if you need your lasers to react to a 3D camera? That's where this next method comes in. All right, so in this method, we're gonna use particles to generate the lasers. That way we can add a ton more. So I'm gonna bring down a P emitter and a P render bring that to the scene. All right, so in the P emitter, I'm gonna take the region and bring the size all the way down to one. We just want it coming from this one point here. So then I'm gonna bring up the velocity all the way. So if I press play, we just have a little line of dots. So to break that up, I'm gonna bring up the velocity variance just a little bit. I'm also gonna add a tiny little bit of angle variance. So two and two in the Z. So I'm gonna bring the number down to something really small, like 0.7. So now we're gonna turn each of these little particles into lasers. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the style change it to line. So now we have these tiny little lines. So what I can do to fix that is change the size to velocity to 0.1. Now if we press play, that looks really bad. What we can do to fix that is under the controls, go to rotation, uncheck always face camera, and make the rotation relative to motion. Now it's looking much better. It's looking kind of like a machine gun of lasers. So now looking at them, I think I want them to be a bit faster. So I'm gonna change the velocity to 1.5. That looks nice. All right, so now I'm gonna add a camera 3D, open the dual viewer. So on this one, I'm gonna click perspective and change it to camera 3D one. So now we're seeing what the camera's seeing in this viewer. I'm gonna plug the media into the camera so it'll show our footage as a background. Then in the camera's transform settings, I'm going to pick use target, I'm going to right click, turn off the grid just so I can see the lasers a little bit better. So I'm just going to play around with the camera until it lines up with the angle of the footage. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to bring out the footage from the camera. Now I'm going to add a render 3D. So I'm going to change the type to OpenGL render. Now I'm not really seeing anything. So what I can do is right click, change the options to check our underlay. Now we can see these faint little lines. So let's make them a little bit easier to see by adding a brightness contrast and bringing the gain up all the way. That's better. All right, so before we add a glow or anything, I wanna track the tip of our gun. So the footage I'm using has a little bit of camera motion. So what I'm gonna do is add a tracker. Go to the first frame. Then I'm just gonna track the tip of the gun right here. Change the mode to best match and just track that forward. All right, that finished tracking. I'm gonna drag out the tracker from our footage. I'm gonna bring down a background and plug that into the background of it and just change the alpha to zero. Then I'm gonna plug our lasers into the green input of this. So nothing's happening. So I'm gonna change the operation to match move. Then I'm gonna merge that over our footage, change the type to screen. So now the lasers are moving with our gun, but they're not coming from the right point. So before our tracker, I'm gonna add a transform and then just move it to the tip of the gun. So now let's make these look like lasers. So you could do it the same way as the first method, adding soft glows and stacking those, or you can do what I prefer to do and add X-Glow. This is a plugin that you can get on Reactor. It's free and it's my favorite way of adding glow. So I'm just gonna change the color to, I think green this time. Yeah, that looks nice. And then to tweak things a little bit, I'm gonna add another plugin called Tintensity. Both of these are free, you can get them on Reactor. So with Tintensity, I'm just gonna bring up the gamma bunch and the saturation. Of course, I can change the hue to see if I like a different color. I'm happy with my green. And maybe just boost the gain just a tiny little bit. So for the muzzle flash, you might be thinking, oh no, do I have to add an asset for every single laser that comes out? And I mean, you could if you want to, but there's a way easier way to do it. So I'm just gonna copy all of these nodes here and then paste them over here. So now we have a duplicate of our laser setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these particles to automate the muzzle flash. All right, so I'm gonna go into the particles and let's change a few settings. All right, so first I'm gonna bring down the velocity and the velocity variance all the way down to zero. So if we press play, we should see nothing. Then the rotation, I'm gonna check always face camera. So in the style, I'm gonna change it to bitmap. Then I'm gonna bring down a fast noise. Open that in the other viewer. Under the image tab, I'm gonna uncheck auto resolution and change it to 100 by 100. All right, so in the noise settings, I'm gonna bring up the detail all the way. Then the color, I'm gonna change it to gradient, change the type to radial, and drag the black point somewhere in the middle here and play around with the white so that it's not going off the screen. Then I'm going to swap them. I'm gonna bring the white end to this side of the gradient and the black to the other. Then with the black selected, I'm gonna bring down the alpha all the way. Now I'm gonna bring the seed rate to something huge like 10 and change the type to discontinuous. Then I'm gonna add a transform node and just bring down the aspect a little bit so it looks more like a muzzle flash. So now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna drag it into the P emitter. All right, so let's play around with that. I'm gonna change the size to velocity back to zero. I'm gonna change the animate from over time to particle birth time. Then under the controls, I'm gonna change the lifespan, bring that down to two. Then back in the style, I'm gonna bring up the fade controls and then bring the out point all the way in. So now it'll fade in a little bit, look more like it's flashing. All right, so now if we merge this whole thing over our footage, we take a look at that. I wanna change the type to screen. Now that is way too bright. So in the X-Glow, I'm gonna bring the gain to 0.5. Then in the intensity, I'm gonna bring everything down to zero. 
except for the gamma. Now it's still a little bright, so I'm gonna delete this brightness contrast, and yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Then for adding the light to her, it was the same process as the last time. Let me know what you think of this new format of combining a beginner and advanced tutorial in one. Do you like it, or should I just stick with one or the other? And if you want to make more Star Wars VFX, then check out this video right here, where I show you how to make a spaceship scene inside of Fusion.